You were supposed to pick a movie. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. So this movie, uh, uh, speaking of 90s nostalgia, has nothing to do with that. <laughs> this movie was from 2015, I think, and it is the movie Gone Girl. I haven't seen this. You have not seen this movie? I have not seen it. And we will not talk about this movie because it's a movie that you need to see. All right. So, anyways, that was just a joke. The movie that I <laughs> here's really talking about is I what? got one. Rugrats the movie. Yeah, uh, that's a definitely a '90s nostalgia movie. Uh, I feel like '90 or is that movie ushered me into the 2000s. My uh, my kids have been watching it a lot recently, and it's really? uh. Not very good. I don't know if you remember it very well or not. But I uh, remember it being right there at the tail end of me enjoying Rugrats. Uh-huh. So I don't know if I've even seen the full thing. I know I've probably seen most of it, but I didn't. I, I remember not enjoying it. Like I remember thinking, like this is the end of Rugrats for me. I yeah. just I'm too old for it now. Well, so the story for Rugrats it's 23 <laughs> um, is. Tommy's parents are pregnant. They're getting ready to have yes. a, new, a new baby. Tommy's excited for a new sister. Turns out it's a boy. They have the boy. They name it Dill Pickles. Dill, Dill um, Pickles. And uh, the other kids are excited at first, and then the baby won't stop crying. The parents are giving the baby so much attention. All the other kids are frustrated, and Tommy feels kind of forgotten about. And so they accidentally turn it. Yeah, they try to return them. They get into a crate and accidentally get taken away by a delivery guy who is there to pick up a toy Tommy's dad made. And uh, they get lost in the woods. Yeah, that's right. The reptile wagon. Yeah. And there's a scene where... um, So Dill is kind of a jerk to Tommy. He's just, you know, being a baby or whatever. Doesn't uh, he feed him to monkeys? Well, he's like, you want the monkeys? You can have the monkeys. Monkeys love bananas. And Tommy opens up a can of baby banana food and is about to dump it on (laughs) Dill's head so the monkeys will take him away. And then he sees his reflection in the the lightning flash of the water. It's like pouring rain and it's all dramatic. It's very intense. And so he sees his reflection and how angry he was. So he like changes his mind and takes him back. And then they start taking care of each other and loving each other. But it's intense for a little kid movie. Because he almost had his brother murdered. Yeah. Yeah, there's no coming back from that. No, just ask Kane. You can't because he died. I thought you were talking about the wrestler. Yes, who are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the guy from the Bible at first. Or at second. At first yeah. I thought you were talking yeah, about the wrestler. The first. At second I thought you were talking about the Bible. Oh, that's the I same guy? I believe would be the same person. Well, yeah, the, the wrestler is both characters. still alive. That's what you think. Oh, breaking news, everybody. Taylor has an Kane icing that dead is... at 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's an exclusive. We're breaking it here on the podcast. You're not going to hear this for three more months. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. It's a bit old. <laughs> but but hey, in when you listen to this podcast and you remember that Kane died three months earlier, remember you heard it here first. <laughs> you we heard it we told you first, you heard it here last. You just didn't know it yet. That's how we like to do our up to date news. Yes. We we get the news first, we deliver it last. <laughs> oh man. Um, so, I still have to talk about a movie. Well, we're talking about Rugrats. Uh, this is a Rugrats Oh, yeah, episode. that's right. <laughs> what did you think about the, the show? Ru- the Rugrats episode we've been waiting on. <laughs> I love the show. I, I loved it because, to me, there were like, it was like a, a perfect transition of, of television shows uh-huh. that like, that it, it just worked for me. It went from like Rugrats to Recess, right? Yeah. And then from recess went to like what was that other sh- like rocket power? Yeah, no, well, there was a what was that power? the one about the girl? The girl. It was right after recess. 
Oh, you know, I, I would even I would even argue that from recess it kind of grew up into like Doug. I, well, Doug was before all that. Well, yeah, but as far as age wise, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever I'm trying to think in my head is getting lost. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. What is the girl one you're talking about? I don't remember. She had red hair and pigtails on both sides of her head, and it came on right after recess. Pepper did. Ann. Pepper Ann. Was it Pepper Ann? I think so. Maybe. Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann. Over seventh grade. Catch her if you can, Pepper Ann. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the same era. And then it went to like Rocket Power, and then uh, there was that show. It was pretty short lived. It was The Weekenders. You remember that one? Yeah, so I remember the name. I don't remember the show. I feel like it only lasted for like a season. It was it was like a grown up Rocket Power, not grown up, but older kid Rocket Power. Yeah. Well, I forgot about Rocket Power. It's a cool show. <laughs> it's not as good as you remember. I tried showing my kids not. it, and it was did not hold up very well. What about Recess? Does it hold up? I haven't watched that for a long time. I bet it does. Well, uh, I've told this story a couple I times, I think, is. on the podcast. But growing up, I my favorite movie was Terminator. And uh, that yes. was when I was like four. By the time I turned nine, strict. my parents got very strict about what we could watch. And I wasn't allowed to watch Rugrats anymore. <laughs> because they were a bunch of rule breakers. Yeah, there was one episode where Tommy, he decides he's not going to wear his diaper. Yep, I remember so that one. He takes it off in defiance of what his parents want. And my parents are like, this is teaching our kids to be defiant. And uh, and how old were you at this point? I was like nine. And do you think you were a defiant nine-year-old? Probably. And do you think it was because of Rugrats? Definitely not. I feel like that's it's almost insulting to think that I'm going to emulate the behavior of a baby. <laughs> As a nine-year-old. <laughs> like, if anything, I'm going to emulate T.J. Detweiler from Recess. I always emulated Which I did. the Terminator. I went around. Oh, I would and go they were to, fine with that. I would go to biker bars, and uh, I would grab the biggest one I could find, slam him on the table, and stab a knife through his hand into his back, and then steal his jacket. Well, see, that just shows the it, – it was just an early example of the the almost double standard that we see now is audiences are okay with all the violence, but once you introduce nudity, that's where we draw the line. <laughs> well, you know you're talking about a baby being naked, right? It gets kind of weird. Exactly. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> Your line is baby nudity? I, I draw uh, the I'm line. I'm on the other side of that line. <laughs> I draw it a lot further down the line. That is beside the point. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the 90s cartoons, I know it's kind of a thing where everyone is like, the cartoons I had when I was a kid are the best cartoons. Like, people love the Flintstones and the Jetsons and Rugrats and Doug and SpongeBob and I don't know, I don't even know eh. what's going on now. But Bunch I, of garbage. I feel like 90s cartoons SpongeBob. were, mm -hmm. The best, hold up the best, because they yeah, were in that, that age or that time when they're like, oh, we can get away with it, saying anything, but they're yeah, like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't say anything. <laughs> and so there's like a lot of adult jokes and concepts. Oh that, yeah, that they know that kids aren't going to get, but if like your parents are watching, they'll get it. And if they're cool parents, then they'll think it's funny. <laughs> If not, they'll make you turn it off. But because that, that wasn't happening with the Flintstones and stuff like that. But like in the nineties, they no. did that. And then they realized like, Oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. We're getting a lot of backlash or whatever. And now it's all watered down Peppa Pig stuff. Oh gosh. I could go on. We could do a whole podcast on my issues with Peppa Pig. Well, what are your issues with Peppa Pig? They are very mean to that father. <laughs> <laughs> I think his, his name is Daddy Pig. Yeah. They fat shame this dude like three to four times an episode. And I'm not talking about just the kids. I'm talking about his wife and his own mom. They will take every opportunity to make fun of how fat he is. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, 
First of all, he's a pig. Second of all, you're all pigs. This is what you're all going to look like. And then you're all going to get dead. Like, co- then I'm going to eat you. Up. I'm going to eat you. Cook you up with some eggs. It's awful. And it's like, I don't know if it's just poor drawing or I, I don't know what it is. But like, there's a couple times where they'll say something and they'll like kind of show the dad's face and he legit looks sad. Like, uh, that might be you projecting. <laughs> It might be. My kids are very mean to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they make them, like, depressed. I Not think- depressed? Okay. There will be times where he, like, laughs about it and he'll, like, joke about it. But then there's there's a few where it's, like, he just doesn't say anything. It just, like, shows his face and he's like, I've had enough of this. This think- is the last straw. You think it's the building up to being making a, making a murderer part two? Uh, for sure. I think he needs to get out of there and find himself like a Miss Piggy. SpongeBob is still on, but it's not the same. I I remember really enjoying SpongeBob. You know, not even it felt like it wasn't even that long ago. And now it, he's just annoying to me. I don't know if it's because I'm older or what. But it's, it's it's not there. It's but not very funny. Cartoons, it's not yeah. not anymore. At least I used to think it was. Uh, I never liked 90s it. Nineties cartoons were. The greatest. Well, did that you ever? My opinion. Did you ever watch uh, Rin and Stimpy? Yeah, I didn't really care for that one. Yeah, me either. I, it scared me. I saw it too early. That like one? I saw it too young, and it was yeah, same here. Like aggressively weird, and it like I was like, oh, this show's not for me. <laughs> I don't want to watch. I this. will say the same about uh, the Animaniacs. Mm. Like they were like. I think I was just too young, just just on the brink. Yeah, and they were like too wa- like wacky and in, in my face that I it made me uncomfortable. Same with uh, there was what's the other one? Pinky and the Brain. I never mind you those. That one? Yeah, what scared me as a kid was uh, Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, like, I used to love those. I that saw, scared my brother a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's another one I saw. I think too young. Well, I also was terrified of scary movies, but. uh yeah, I I did not like that show because it it told me that it was scary, right? Like it was sold as a scary show, and so mm-hmm. I was extra scared going into it as a kid. I remember being afraid of it when I had never seen it. You know, like oh, it's coming on, so let's change the channel. We don't want to watch this. And then one day, I think it it I had flipped on and it was already on, and I didn't even realize that. I was watching it and I watched like a whole episode. I was like, oh, that was cool. And, and they come to find out that's what it was. So I was like, that's not really as scary as, as they make it out to be. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost more like a mystery show. Yeah. Like a kid's unsolved mysteries, which was terrifying. <laughs> Did um, you ever watch that show? Unsolved mysteries? Uh, uh-uh. that was not a kid show. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching, um, what was that? What came after cops? America's most wanted. That always freaked me out. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they're like, at least with cops, you see these guys getting arrested. America's most wanted. Those guys are still out there, and they were the most wanted. So they'd always be terrible people. They're like, this guy just murdered a bunch he, of neighbors, and he'll sneak into your house and do it to you. Call the cops if you see him. It's like, what if you yeah, don't he see him? Like a, he would. <laughs> He would make a plea, like right at you. He's like, "Hey, he's in your neighborhood. You need to watch out. Be vigilant." The that um, that story is pretty tragic, though. The guy who uh, with his son, yeah. Uh, what's I'm trying to remember his name? Walsh, something Walsh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I can't think of his name. You're listening to the Unsolved Mysteries podcast. <laughs> But, uh, you remember Pokemon? Did you watch Pokemon? Well, you weren't allowed to watch Pokemon, oh. right? So, uh, Pokemon, <laughs> a sore subject in my family's house. I was allowed for a while, right? When it was like new in yeah. America. Yeah, cause and me and you watched it a lot. We watched it, we had the cards, the games, this and that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, my parents decided to. When I was in sixth grade, yeah. my parents decided to look a little deeper into it, and they realized that there was something called evolution. You know, the Pokemon evolve into different Pokemon, and they just associated that with like the Big Bang Theory, and immediately shut it down. Like we weren't allowed to do anything to do with Pokemon, and we had to sell all of our stuff. 
And I remember I, I had a pretty good card collection, and I had like this hologram blast toys that was supposedly pretty valuable. We had like the games, and we had a whole bunch of stuff, and we had to sell it to a family friend at a very small cost, in my opinion. <laughs> we probably could have got, we could pro- I bet you we could have got 200 bucks for it, and my mom sold it for 50 bucks. Well, this was all before eBay was really a thing, too. Yeah, well, yeah, That's definitely. Like so right at the beginning of when eBay was taken off. Yeah. So at that point, Pokemon was like completely, completely banned in our house. So as like a coping mechanism, me and Joshua, we invented our own style oh of Pokemon. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I, I don't think you, I knew about have this. I ever told you this? No. Um, they were. <laughs> <laughs> They were called Thumpermon. Nice. I and definitely have never heard just, about this. Like, they ate Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> like our our reaction was to like hate Pokemon all of a sudden, and yeah. I don't know why. It was like the the easiest way to cope with not being able to <laughs> do anything with it anymore. Yeah. And so we made these Thumpermon that like eat Pokemon, and they were like way stronger than Pokemon. They're like dinosaurs and stuff. <laughs> we, had, we made our own cards and everything. We tried to like <clears throat> make a game know with it like the yeah. the card game it did yeah yeah well i uh, remember you still sneaking it when you would come over to my house so that's so <laughs> after a while i i realized i don't know what happened pokemon was still big oh i actually i know exactly what happened so we went to quinn's house and i don't know if it was for his birthday or if we were just there but then we were going to go – they were going to go see the Pokemon movie when the, the first movie had come out. And you guys went, and I had to go home because I was not allowed to watch it. And I was, like, so upset. Yeah. Like that, I think that's what I realized. I still want Pokemon in my life. <laughs> so then I started sneaking it. And I would I would either watch it at your house or I'd play the games at your house. or I'd get up – because it used to come on at, like, 6 in the morning. So I'd get up real early and watch it on TV. Well, I remember um, you. Uh, I never left. Well, I, the speaking of the Pokemon movie, uh, yes. me and Zeke and Millennial went to see it the day it came out, and we got interviewed by someone with a radio station when we walked out. Because we Did you really, yeah, we were sitting there waiting for my mom. Like I said before, we had to call my mom on the payphone to let her know when the movie was done so she could come pick us up. And we're sitting there, and this lady walks over with this giant like. Is the size of a, uh, probably like three laptops stacked on top of each other now. Like that's probably the, the size of her recorder. And she's like, can I ask you guys some questions? We're like, sure. And she's like, how was the movie? And we're like, well, we don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> I don't think we oh, said wow. that, but we're like, we don't want to give away the ending. She's like, no, just give away the ending. It's fine. And to us, we're like, <laughs> no, you have to see it. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, we like, took. Listen, kid, I'm not gonna watch this stupid movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, oh, that's fine. I don't, I don't think you've ever told me that. The you, I remember you came over to my house before or one time, and you were there for like three days straight. Like you just didn't go home, and you played Pokemon yeah. Yellow on a Game Boy nonstop. Like you didn't talk to me at all. We didn't do anything. You just kept playing. Pokemon. That was because I had I, I had to binge. And I was, I got so annoyed. I, I lost control. I got, I got so annoyed with you that, cause me and my brother both had a copy. I took my copy and I made you think it was the game you were playing and I smashed it with a sledgehammer in front of you. And yeah. you were so mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> no, you monster. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I smashed my own game. I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if my brother even thought- played it. I'm pretty sure you smashed his because then I eventually found you, like in the bathroom cabinet. Well, I hid it. I hid that one from you, so right. you thought I smashed mine. Um, yeah. But uh, I remember another time, I think the best burn I ever got on you, I actually still kind of feel bad about it because I think people were making fun of you a lot for it. We were at uh, this freshman year, no, uh, seventh grade. Seventh grade. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Seventh grade. Yeah, we went to Mammoth. 
Yeah, seventh grade, we went on a mission trip to Mammoth. You pushed me back. I felt so stupid. <laughs> and uh, we were Taylor was playing Pokemon the trading card game. He borrowed it from someone, and it was playing it constantly. And Quinn. we were, yeah, you borrowed it from Quinn, and we were all sitting around. And uh, I was looking at you, and I could see the reflection of the light bouncing off of the Game Boy onto your face. And I was like, Taylor. You're going to go home with a square sunburn on your eyes. And everyone, like, it's not as funny now, <laughs> but at the time, everyone started laughing at you. And I was like, well, I guess I just lost my best friend. <laughs> no, I remember at at the time, it was funny. And I was like, oh, man, that was that was pretty funny. But then, like, people kept talking about it for, like, days. And I was like, jeez, all right, people, let it go. Like, it, I agree. It was fun. I wasn't like upset at first. It was like later on. I was like, dude, come on. Well, I yeah, wasn't. They didn't look up. Wow. <laughs> I, I just said it the woods, right? No, oh, it was like, uh, I don't remember any of their names. Scott. They were like older than us. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> Scott, Jason, Mark, <laughs> and Aaron. That's. Oh, yeah. I kept hearing about it. Yeah. That's funny. This is the best burn I ever got on you. I'm hoping for the day to get it again. The, You'll never get it. The comeback burn. Or callback <laughs> is what I meant to say. Callback burn. Well, oh. if the 90s come on TV, what are you going to do? Uh, watch the 90s. Every time. It's weird, man. It's getting to the point, like, when we grew up, that 70s show was almost as far away from the 70s. When that 70s show was on TV, is almost the same distance as the 90s is getting to now. That's that's crazy, right? Because end up saying that seventy show was in the nineties. Yeah, and so that was you know what twenty years, twenty five years, and wow. now it's we're not that far away from that being <laughs> the case now. That's bonkers. And that's another that's thing. Absolutely, I got a bone to pick with you from past Here we conversations. Go. Oh, you let's hear. It. You were convinced. Yes. That that '70s show was that '60s show, and they crossed over into that '70s show as a kid. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. What I just said, you would argue. Are you talking about that '80s show? That's what I said back then. I was like, "No, you're wrong. That was a different show." And you're like, "No, no, I remember. It used to be that '60s show, then it they crossed crossed over to that yeah. '70s show." I remember having that argument, and I remember at the time I was so confident, and I don't know why. <laughs> so I, and I, somewhere I saw something like that '60s show, and I was like, "Oh, well, clearly that's just like <laughs> what came before." It wasn't even something that I'd seen, so I don't know why I was like so adamant about it. Yeah, because I was I like, because <laughs> I kept telling you, I was like, "No, you're thinking of that '80s show. That '80s show is a different show, but it's like playing off of that '70s show," and you're like. No, it was definitely that 60s show. And this was before the internet was a big thing, so I couldn't just, like, prove you wrong. Yeah, you just had to live life knowing I was wrong. Yeah, apparently for 20 years, holding it against you until now we have the internet, finally. Well, now the truth is out. <laughs> well, That 60s show was a great show, though. <laughs> this episode is coming out <laughs> February 11th. Which yes, means, yes, Hurricane Heist. Happy Downtown. Hurricane Heist. Didn't we talk about that one? No. Oh, um, sounds really dumb, though. <laughs> no, you saw it. Sorry, it sounded dumb until I saw it. Yeah, what did you think of it? And so, this is actually, believe it or not, a prequel to the Surf Ninjas movie from the nineties. Okay. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Basically, these guys are. Surf ninjas still, but now they're bank robbers, and they wait for the most inopportune times whenever there's a hurricane, <laughs> and they use the hurricane as their getaway vehicle. Okay. Well, the um, problem, the hurricane is going to push them into land, isn't it? Uh, not if you do it right. Okay. You got to watch some movie. I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, basically they, they time it just right. Uh -huh. So they have the surfboards waiting for them outside and they rob the money. <laughs> they rob the money. <laughs> they ride their surfboards to cover. 
and mm-hmm. it, they get away with it every time. They never get caught. It's just the same thing. Spoilers. Yes, they get caught and they die. What well, you're the way you tell stories is very difficult to follow. There's a shootout. Uh, they thought that they could use their surfboards as cover, and turns out bullets go right through the surfboard, right through it. <laughs> that, that is a almost as bullets tore right through their bodies. <laughs> That's a hard lesson to learn. It was like, have you seen the vehicle from uh, Bonnie and Clyde's that they died in? The the real life one. Yeah. Just riddled the bullets. That's yeah. what it looked like, but it was a surfboard. Oh, okay. I figured the surfboard would just disintegrate at a certain point. Uh, yeah, you would think that. Yeah. Then, I don't know how historically accurate uh, this movie is now that I about it. <laughs> I have a feeling it is not historically accurate at all. Um, yeah, there's a lot of continuity issues. But uh, all in all, 10 out of 10. All right. Well, if you like our show, if you'd like to help us out, you can do so by going over to patreon.com slash I seen that. You can vote for Taylor or Alan. Whoever has the least amount of votes by the end of the month is going to have to pay the punishment. Pay the punishment. Then you can also find us on Twitter at I seen that pod, on YouTube at I seen that, or you can follow us on Facebook. Anywhere else that you want to find us. Yeah, anywhere you want to look, you'll probably find us. We also want to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. You can find them in Oceanside. They're an escape room. You guys should go check them out. Yeah, escape rooms are awesome.